Hello everyone and welcome to this premiere draft of Forgotten Realms. Now this is a recording of me playing. Um, I did get seven wins with it, but I thought it would be interesting to have a little review of my plays and misplays along the way. I definitely fumbled along to seven wins here and my dog's in the background. He's feeling a little sick, so sorry for the background noise if you can hear that. Uh, but I hadn't played Magic for about eight years, maybe ten years. Um, and I just wanted to showcase some of my thoughts. And I wanted to go back and watch my games so that I could review. Okay, well, I definitely should have done this different. This was definitely a misplay. So, looks like I'm about to hop in here. First pick, Desert Doom. Seems pretty good. Uh, first picking a Mythic. Uh, even if it's not a mythic, it's a 5-5 five, five flyer for 5. Which, in limited, can't really go wrong with, I don't think. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Poor guy. He's got to go to the vet today. He's not feeling well. Hoping to maybe table one of these. I'm also reading cards, because this is also the first time I've been seeing this set for myself. Uh... To prepare for this, I just watched a bunch of LSV drafts, as many as I could. We did three or four, so let's watch that. That's quite the lightning. Now, that's kind of neat. Choose target player, return half the creatures it control. Um, I didn't quite understand that, so... Venture... An 0-4 for 3. I wasn't sure if I was... Um, white yet and I also wasn't sure if I was venturing yet uh, so but dragon's fire is removal so I don't know if I agree with this I mean maybe I I'm hindsight trading because I end up blue white okay so spoiler but knowing that I would take steadfast paladin but not knowing where to go I'm trying to leave myself open getting past a a 3-3 three, three flyer here. I think I should pick another white card and just say, okay, uh, blue-white flyers it is. But I might want to stay open. Yeah, I don't think that's uh, that's good for third pick. I think it's a good card, but LSV has pointed out, if you ever roll a 20, it's actually bad. So mm, I would pick the planar ally here. It's just I think I'm trying to stay open. Uh, I don't like committing to a double white and double blue too early. I mean, I definitely want to play the Desert Doom, though, so I'm kind of leaning towards blue, and I'm kind of forcing blue here. It's just my play tactics for drafts. It seems to work out for me in um, how I play. Now, getting past another planner ally, at this point, I think I should be white. White seems open. Like picking the the dragon's fire is fine here. It's just a shock, and I I go by the philosophy of the old classic bombs removal, um, evasion artifacts, dudes bread bombs removal evasion artifacts dudes. So artifacts not so much. Uh, I I make that a the answers or anything. <laughs> But you need dudes. Um, but bombs, I picked a first pick bomb. Second pick, I picked removal. So, and is it is a, a blue-red is a color combination. But at this point, planar ally number two getting past seems fine to go into white. Because that's a high pick card. So white seems open. A 1-1 one, one flyer. So... Anything limited, if you're new to limited, um, I mean, I've been playing Magic for since I was eight years old, basically. And then after college, I had to quit because it was just, I had to get my life in order and Magic the Gathering wasn't going to help me in my, my quests in life, so to speak. And it's a very addictive game, so you know, I was very addicted to it and I had to stop, so... Coming back into it is a bit risky, especially when I have a son. Um, but I think we're okay. Yeah, I definitely don't think that we're venturing here. So taking the hawk over the 
the double strike two three seems fine. And push in a road seems meh. But I just like the Ranger Hawk because in a pinch, if he's got some way to block a one one, I can venture into the dungeon and maybe that'll help me scry if I need to draw a land next turn or something. But that is a very late basilisk. But I'm happy enough to pass the green. Um, and as a general rule, again, uh, from my experience, a lot of people think that you should, oh, there's a bunch of green cards, or there's a bunch of good white cards. Let's pass those. So the people down there, they go into those colors, and then they're going to pass you your colors on our pack two. Generally, you don't want to do that. You just want to pick the best cards. Because you only get two picks out of it, basically. Third pick, maybe you wheel something playable. But you just want to pick the best cards. And sometimes you get past Blackhawk Knight. <laughs> you know? It is what it is. Contact Other Plane seems really solid in blue. Um, I like the mace here because... If I'm playing blue-white flyers, and I'm already thinking this in my mind, play blue-white flyers, that I can put that mace on a dork, like a 1-1 one -one flyer. I already have two rangers hawk. Now it's a 3-3 three -three rangers hawk. 3-3 three -three flyers are super good and limited. Very undervalued. There's not very many ways to um, deal with flyers in limited, unless you... I mean, you don't want to use your removal on a 1-1, one -one, or your your one drop it's just sad and then they use all their removal and then i have the desert doom to follow up i take the mimic here i first time reading the card it's absolutely unplayable so don't play it uh the gloom stalker tabled i will take that over the shocking grasp it is a late ogre i agree I'm probably commenting on that and these are cards i don't really want to play orb of dragon kind is unplayable basically unless you're very heavy um i just take the rare you find the villains later counter target spell or draw two cards and dis discard two cards i'm not going to play it so but i take the blue card to at least signal red and green now that is something you can do um if you send a last pick like decent blue card to, or green card to show hey this is open that, that is a way to signal green or something. But other than that, pick the best card. I do see a blue dragon here. So that that's going to be the pick. Warlock class, a mace. Uh, hoping to table the Celestial Unicorn or Gloomstalker here. But blue dragon not close. Enters the battlefield and helps you survive the game. So yeah, I don't, I don't think I liked the Polymorph after reading this. But blue dragon seems really solid. Let's see what we got here. Hive of the Eye Tyrant seems fine. Devoted Paladin, give your flying dudes vigilance, but it is a 5 drop and only a 4 4, so. Mm. Venture into the dungeon. Return it to its hand. So. Uh, I, I suppose I could have taken that. I don't believe I end up taking it here. Um. Yeah, Ven Veteran Dungeoneer, just a solid 3-4 that ventures is fine. 3-2 uh, for 3 probably would have been better. It, that does the same thing. And if I get kind of um, flooded, I can use the beast to kind of do stuff and finish a dungeon. So it seems fine. Uh, this I see flying and I take it, basically. At this point, I'm blue-white flyers in my mind. So if I see something that says flying and it's blue or white, I'm going to be taking it. And this is also good because... So they have a giant spider, a 2-4 with reach. You can make that 2-4 with reach a 1-1 one -one bird instead, and now you can swing with your 2-2 your two -two or your other flyers. Uh, getting past a blue dragon this late, I did not remember that. Uh, Divine Smite, I don't like. I mean, if you're playing black, it seems good, but... Against black, that is. 
But I'm not going to take it over a blue dragon. Hoping to wheel a half elf monk here. This is pack four. Or pick four. Pack four. Can you imagine? There's a manticore. See, look at that. Two mana. Or a two one for four mana flying. As opposed to like one mana for a one one flyer. Seems good. Again, flyer. <laughs> uh, this uh, you see a guard approach tap target creature or target creatures you control gain hex proof seems fine leather armor seems unplayable so i would not main deck you see a guard approach unless i absolutely have to but yeah i, I take the pixie here over the unicorn i i don't remember what i take but hindsight i take pixie because i want flyers although you do need dorks and three two for three is not bad a Pegasus. Wow. I mean, this isn't even close. I could get a third hawk. That'd be fine, but... Pegasus. <laughs> a 2-1 Grizzly Bear, basically, for two. That draws a card. Super solid. I want that. Portable Hole. Eh. It's not high up on my playable list, but I mean, you can play it. And you find the villains later. It's not even considered. Fireball. I think people are still way undervaluing it, so. Contact the other plane. Not close. <laughs> I'm blue white flyers with two blue dragons. I'm trying to stall out and play my seven drop blue dragons or my five five dragon, so. That's it. It's pretty late. You come to a river. Target, target non land permanent to your owner's hand. So it's basically boomerang. Um, yeah, untap targets are, yeah, that, I'm, there's nothing to untap here. Come to a river. I love bounce spells, especially in blue white flyers. Seems fine. Talisman, while okay, it only gives plus one, plus one, and uh, I kind of like the mace over the polymorph here. I think I take the trickster, uh, trickster because I just want the rare though. It's a very late battle hammer. That card is very good, but unless you're playing right um, Boros, it's just unplayable. I very much undervalued this card. Um, I don't know. I still feel like it, it shouldn't be like your 18th card, but maybe your 23rd card. Because if you have like... Ooh, I would take the monk here, actually. Because I'm, I'm trying to survive, but yeah, either one's fine. But maybe I'm thinking about the uh, curve here. So I have a lot of four drops already. Last pick, Ranger Talk. I'm playing all three. That's really good. But yeah, the uh, the one one flyer for one is super good because if you're on the play and you have two lands, but you have it in your hand. And you have maybe like a, a five drop in your hand. You kind of need lands. So you can scry, make sure that you're drawing lands. That way you don't get mana screwed. Now I take the Guild Thief here. I don't like it. Now what do I pass up on here? A Gloomstalker, a Shocking Grass, uh, a Soul Knife Spy, or Find the Villain's Lair, Great Axe. Okay, I'm not missing out on anything. So I'm happy enough to that I took this. It's just, it really underperformed, and I end up cutting it eventually for the 1-1 one, one flyer. Um, it's just, I never got to use it. Reading cards here. Lots of good cards for, not us, but there is a playable here. A 3-3 three, three flyer. When Aaron's Battlefield, you scry. What more could I ask for? And then I'm about the only thing left in here for me is Evolving Wild, and I don't count on tabling that, so... <sighs> this is the only card in the pack that I'm going to use. And sometimes that happens when you're drafting. But it's third pack. And I already have how many playables? 23? Well, 21, because I haven't got rid of the red cards. I know that might bother some people. Now, here might be a little controversial. Uh, controversial. Um, you can take the 4-5. The you can take 
the priest, it draws a card. Iron Golem, I don't think is what I want to be. So, and then I think I take the air cult elemental. I, Ray of Frost would be better here. Um, it's pretty much removal. If I'm playing against red, it just deals with it. If I'm playing against anything else, if they attack and tap, it deals with that too. So, yeah. Ray of Frost would have been way better there. Plus, Air Elemental is pretty low on the pick order. It might wheel. Probably not, but it might. And it's very expensive. Dragon's Turtle is excellent. It came in, uh, came in to play at clutch times all throughout the, the seven games or however many games. It was just wonderful. So, didn't understand it, but it was a 3 5 with flash, so for three, <laughs> I took it. Don't take the mimic here. Okay, secret door. It gives me something to do and venture into the dungeon if I have five mana that I have nothing better to do. I'm also thinking it's a 0 4. So if they have a 2 3 or a 3 1, which are pretty popular. Um, it allows me to stall and get to my 5th turn, 6th turn, 7th turn. And when you're blue-white, it's fine. So I'm just going to fly over them and uh, not pick that card. <laughs> I mean, that's fine too, if you were looking at it. But maybe I would have picked that because it, it was solid for me. Uh, bounce a card. Love it. Monk of the Open Hand. I'm not playing Monk. It's just, this is not the deck to play Monk. Second spell each turn. Yeah, I'm playing one spell a turn maximum. So, I'll definitely just bounce something. Another bounce spell. Um, yeah, definitely going to play that. Easy. Not going to be playing Ambushed. So... I'm pretty sure I get last pick um, the defender. Maybe not. Yeah, look at that. Boulder's Gate. This late. I mean, you're not going to be able to mill it, but still. And then Plundering Barbarian this late. And Fireball this late. It's just like, what are people playing? <laughs> I, I honestly don't know. Finally, you figure out that you can put the red cards in the sideboard. Yeah, uh, I would actually main deck it now. In this certain deck with the blue white flyers, I have the mace. I like the scry. So yeah, this is the pack where nothing was good. I was looking for evolving wild. I'm pretty sure. Uh, so I'll just take a card. A player frost giant or a trick? I think I would rather play a frost giant. Difficult. Look at that. Like. Are people not reading that card? Yeah, here's the secret door, and I'm playing it. So I'm glad I didn't take that. And last pick. You can't see because I'm over myself, but like I'm just like... I'm doing this right now. No one is playing red at our table. No one. Because that card, I would pick that like fourth or fifth. I get it, it's five mana, but... Read it. It deals five damage at instant speed. You can just lava axe them. And if you're playing Boros, it's just, you win the game with that. It's possible it does 7 damage. That card is insane. Okay, maybe not insane, but it's super undervalued right now. Uh, getting rid of the Talisman. Did I get rid of the Mace? No. I think I misclick a bunch here. So I have to cut 6 cards. Dragon's Turtle's good. You find the Villains later, it needs to go. Um, Guild Thief needs to go, and the Silver Raven needs to come back in. All the, the red cards need to go. <laughs> uh, this is me trying to figure out the dragon turtle. Now, truth be told, I should probably be playing 18 lands. And yeah, I could get rid of a ranger's hawk. Yeah, I have no dice roll. So 1-3 for 2 isn't too great. I agree with that. Come to a river. Turn the target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. I really like that. So I wouldn't maybe cut this. 
probably the secret door is my weakest card. Um, it's either that or maybe the 3-2 for 3, but you kind of need those dorks. Um, yeah, a power persuasion over you come to a river, maybe. Maybe cut a Gloomstalker, but again, you need the dorks. And these are all good. I could cut a Frost Giant. But a 4-5 is pretty solid. And I'm not cutting the blue dragons. Yeah, I definitely like the bounce spells. So I would definitely cut Guild Thief here and put in the 1-1 flyer. That scries. And I, I don't mind Secret Door. It seems fine. Like I said, I'm trying to stall out to get to my blue dragons. And then blue dragons just... They fly over you. And I win the game. And then while you have your 6 mana dork that... I call everything dorks, <laughs> apparently. While you have your 6 mana bomb that comes into play and you know you gotta wait for it to attack, I just bounce it. So I'm winning on tempo and then I'm attacking you for 5 every turn. And hopefully my other smaller flyers get in there. You know, my 3-3s three or whatever. Solid hand, can't complain. It's got three and drop, everything you need. So, yeah, uh, turn two of that, not so great. I'm looking to kill it, deal with it, bounce it, something. Debating whether or not to play the planes. You know, giving them less information, always good. Ingenious Smith, I would not play in limited. Uh, he hits here, but even still. You have to play too many artifacts for that to be good. Um, yeah. You don't want to be playing that many artifacts in limited in this format. It used to be that you could play artifacts, because artifacts were you know, very colorless, and they were... Uh, pretty good, so it was fine, but now, not so much. Yeah, I'm looking to, to draw land here, so debating on what to do, uh, play your 3-3. Three, three. That scries. It's not close. Well, we have a land in hand, so I guess I don't need to scry. I forgot that I hit land. So, in case he has removal, a 3-4 would be better to block. I don't want to block with that, so he's going to get the mace on anyway though, so thinking about double blocking, nope, it's hacking, I don't agree with this, don't agree with this, okay, this is a play I would not make this time, after playing, I don't need to try, I already have my fifth land, well, draw an arrow mental, and this seems fine, I don't need Skyon of Stagia. But bouncing seems fine as soon as I hit my six land. Um, I'm assuming that he's going to have tons of counters, so I would go top or bottom top. Okay, no. <laughs> I see. It's been a few days since I've watched myself play, so this is actually really awesome. Blade armor's a solid card. I would play that in my deck right now. 5-5. Five, five. See, if I didn't attack and uh, had the Dungeoneer out, I could double block right now. But now I'm like, uh, do I block here? I guess. I gotta survive. Can't take all this damage. So now I venture into the dungeon or play a 4-5 or, or tap it down. Like, I'm not in a great spot now. It'll be a 7-7, seven, seven, it looks like. See, this is why the... the, um, the air element would be really good here. Yeah, I'd like to venture into the dungeon and start scrying. I'm going to take another 5 here. Maybe 7. Yeah. 
No blocks. And I'm not dead, so I can chomp. I can keep him down. Hawk seems like a fine draw, and then I can contact other planes if I wanted, but no. Uh, definitely, that has flash. I definitely should have waited for attackers. Let's tap that down. Phases out. Yeah, so then that couldn't attack. And then, well then, I'm going to pay it. I would just swing for three here. He's tapped out. You can play your hawk. Come on. Play your hawk. Adventure into the dungeon. It's not close here. I think I should go scry. I bet I go this way, though. <laughs> <laughs> Greedy! Yeah, I need to draw the land. Well, I... No, I don't. Cleric class. Ooh. Yeah, we're about to... We're about to lose this game. For sure. Moon Dancer is going to be too big to handle. He's going to gain a bunch of life to where my little one ones aren't going to do much. Eight eight. Got a chump. Definitely should not have attacked twice there. I mean, I have double strike to consider as well. So Dungeon of the Mad Mage was definitely wrong. So, Hawk of uh, Dungeoneer here. I mean, you could Hawk 4 5 as well. Because you chump, and then you can kill his 4 5 if he attacks with it. But no, I. I don't really have the man. What we can get? Dragon's Turtle is going to be good. Yep, you want that. You want that. Lock down his 7 7. Log it down. You want that on top. Player Ranger Hawk to jump. And you can attack for three. You gotta attack to win. And then create a treasure token. Uh, target creature can't attack. Yeah, you can't do that now because he has ward. So, shouldn't have played the Hawk. See, I misplayed again. Misplayed again. Even watching this. So, yeah. Yeah. Make it so he can't attack. Seems solid. Got a chump. Attack for three and pass. Right too. Lost level. I don't know what he's thinking about here. Two planes. Bottom. Bottom. Yeah. And nope. Don't play that yet. <laughs> You're gonna pass turn. Goes to nine. Poor doggy. <sighs> I'm trying 
turn to a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. You gain that much life. Jeez. Circle of Dreams Druid is not going to do anything. Three green. I don't see that as very playable. I'm trying to figure out how to stop on this attack. Alright, two attackers. Now I gotta play the Dragon Turtle. Super solid. Boom. Yes. Pay the one. Leave a bull light. Left up unsummon, but there is no unsummon. Should left up. Oh man, you got me good. Another guardian of the faith. Does he have to pay for that? Reward? Okay, so it phases out. Okay. Another thing to jump with, and then I can contact other plane. Seems fine. And swing for three. You want to play the four or five? No, don't play four or five. Swing for three. Because there's no... There's no swing all here. Yeah, swing for three. Come on. Three, two black, black. Two, one, one, black. Skeleton, creature tokens. Yeah. I guess now I can play the, uh... The four, five. If I really wanted. The six? Yeah, okay. Ten. Uh huh. And that's his hand, so I'm okay with where we're at. We have two black I'm sorry, we have two one ones to chomp his eight eight with for the time being. That gives us two more turns. Okay. It's not going to phase out anything. Yeah, I don't mind where I'm at here. None of this is scary. Because if he swings with his 5-6, he has no cards in hand. I can just kill it. I'm trading a 4-5 for a 1-1. One, one. Or I'm trading a 3-5 for a 5-6. Yeah, that seems fine. Because I know he doesn't have tricks. That's a terrible attack. And that was one of his better cards. So... I mean, don't get me wrong, you should definitely be attacking with the 6-6, six, six, but... Yeah, that's not going to be good enough. It costs 4 mana and only does 1. <laughs> He's at 13. So, Secret Door and Contact Other Plane is where you want to be. Yeah, let's try 3. Attack first. Yeah, thanks. Might change things. No, you don't need to attack with him. So you win the game. You need to keep it back. Six, seven. Spry three. Okay, so I have to do this right in order to be able to play the dragon and draw the mace. So I have to. I have to put the mace on top. Nope. And then the blue dragon there. 
and the island in the middle. But apparently I want to draw the island. No, see, that's what I need. That's how I need it. Now, to be fair, I don't understand yet how that last, um, that last completing the dungeon works. That's not good enough. So, yep. Yeah, we don't want that to play that though, so... Yeah. Figured out that I'm still in combat. So I would play Guild Thief in the Secret Door here. Because we don't need to contact other planes. Assuming that he doesn't draw a removal spell, which he's green-white. He's not main decking plummet. We're gonna play a blue dragon next turn. Another equipment. See, he's playing all these equipments, but I'm not doing anything. I would not have played it there. I would have played it on a 3-2 maybe. Because I'm going to chump no matter what anyway. So... I mean, I could actually kill it. 4, 5, 6, 7. The problem is then he just makes another creature really big. So... Because he has all these equipments. And then I'm still back to chumping. So I just need to stall out. He seems to be fine with allowing me to trade one ones for it. Uh, yeah, I think you do trade that off. Get rid of his big Dungeoneer. We are trading out 4 5 for it, but. It is what it is, and then we have the blue dragon to follow up next turn. Someone is at the front door. Okay, so we draw the mace. We cannot equip it, can we? Yes, we can. Yeah, that seems good with Guild Thief, doesn't it? But honestly, I would just put it on the um, planar ally and swing for five twice. Yeah, that's cute, but it costs four and it's not going to work. Swing for five. Draw three cards, have to draw land, and then play the blue dragon. So, minus three to that. Um, ward is a thing, so can't target that. And I would chump that anyway. Ooh. Can't target that. Why'd that work? Okay, if I were doing that again, I would... Regardless of ward or not, I would uh, put it on the 6-5... The one two and the one one. <laughs> I just did this <laughs> because that was very intense for me. This being the first game of Magic I had played in, you know, almost a decade. That was intense. I'm <laughs> I'm still in shock right now that I won that game. It, my opponent definitely misplayed. Well, I'm very happy. Uh, my opponent definitely misplayed a lot. Uh, he definitely put the equipments all on one thing. Uh, if I if I had a to deal with like a six six and a seven seven, then I have to like do the double blocking, and then I start using my creatures, and then maybe he eventually smashes through. So if I were him, I would have played it a little bit different, but it's okay. All right, well, we have two lands here and no real play. I keep this because who wants the mulligan in limited? Um, but we're, we're in desperate need of lands. I mean, I'm very unlucky when it comes to mulliganing, so 
what would it likely happen is I would get the exact same hand minus a blue dragon. And I'm thinking, yeah, I would really love that in my hand right now. But, you know, finally I get there with the Ranger's Hawk. Stop protecting it. Um, I don't think I trade here. <sighs> I don't know. I guess I could trade. And blue white flyers, I have to prevent as much damage as I can. The secret door isn't going to prevent me from blocking a 1 1 flyer. Now that he's blue red, it definitely makes me want to trade. Um, I think I'll offer a trade here. Should not play the secret door at first if I'm going into attack. But, I mean, he seemed to... Yeah, if he kept back the 1-1, then I might as well not attack with my Hawk. Because he seems to be afraid of damage as well. We both kind of don't want to trade, but I definitely want to trade. He might not want to trade. <laughs> I can get him for one now. I can only do the Ranger's Hawk as a sorcery, so... I mean, there is real no reason to venture into the dungeon here. And I'm happy to play a 2-1. It's fine. It's blocked by an 04. Again, happy to draw land here because I gotta get to 7 eventually. And he's not doing much, so. Could bounce it, but I don't think that's the play. Um, yeah, I think a play is to tap this Ranger's Hawk and the 2 1. And then go into the dungeon. That's what I ended up doing. It will take a damage to do this, but it's definitely worth one point of damage to go into the dungeon. I think I should go into the Lost Mine, but I can be pretty greedy. I mean, I can get a Goblin Treasure to get that last mana for the Blue Dragon. So but I can get it in the Lost Mine much quicker. So, Lost Mine. I don't have any way to activate other than the secret door. And that's a dude, so... Yeah, that's fine. I just want to complete the dungeon at this point. Yeah, I can venture into the dungeon as a sorcery next turn. You are correct. This is the exact opponent I want to play every time as Blue White Flyers. He's got three lands. He's missed. He's not doing anything. Oh, I was on the play. I guess he hasn't missed a land yet. So, yep, I took one. And you're not hearing sound because I'm on the phone right now. Um, I have five. I can do that instead of playing Gloom uh, Stalker, which, quite honestly, might be the play because he's he did miss his land. I could create a treasure token, and then play a land, and then play Blue Dragon. So yeah, swinging in for one. I could come to a river and force in the attack, but then I can't venture into the dungeon, so that's why I didn't do that. Although that, if I wasn't planning on venturing into the dungeon, that would be a fine play. But it's just not doing much anyway, so who cares. Create a treasure token. 
Yeah, the 1-1 one, one doesn't do anything. It does allow you to put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on target creature, you are correct. But the creative treasure token would be much better here. Because the next turn, we already have the land. Guaranteed blue dragon. And then he'll just scoop him up. Because he'll be way too far behind. He's mana screwed, so I kind of got to play across with him. And that play is just... 3 damage to a 2-1 that's not doing anything. No. If there's a Gloomstalker in hand that that's way better target for. Because I could complete my dungeon in it very soon. I get that he's trying to play a card because... Next turn he's playing uh, the Windseer, but... You know, Nat 22. Um, not Nat 22. Nat 20 also. By the way, my shirt says "World's Okayest Brother." <laughs> In case you were wondering, you're welcome. Um, yeah. So play Blue Dragon, and then three to the Windseer, two to the Silver Raven, one to that. You're tapped out. I'm gonna block. I don't even understand why you attack. Reading the card, because it's the first time I've played it, or the second time I've played it. I wanted to make sure I knew it. Bye bye flyer. Auto pay. Boom. Three. Nope. Yep. Two, one. No attack. No reason to attack there. Cool, we got a five five flyer. Well, okay. I can bounce it, it's fine. Or, I can play a planes and just, uh... Play the other blue dragon. <laughs> Three, two, one. No attacks. <laughs> Get him. <laughs> That's why I really like bounce spells, by the way. Because... If they're going to win the game, you can bounce a creature. If they enchant your creature so you can't play it anymore, you can bounce it. If their creature just is too big, has too many plus one, plus one counters on it, you can bounce it. Just bouncing a creature is so good. Limited. Pegasus. Yeah. Or they double block. You can bounce the other one that you want to kill. Yeah, I think I just Pegasus uh, the 5-5 five, five here and swing for 6. I'm winning that race. Did not do that. Interesting. What play did I end up doing? I'm trying to complete the dungeon? Huh. Well, I'm, I guess I'm thinking I want to... Yeah, I don't agree with that, because I want the flyer. I can double block his 3-3 with it. So I'm trading Pegasus for the Jin. Jenny. Don't agree with that play. In turn, bounce your blue dragon. I I sat there for too long because I was just like, what? My turn. Come to a river. Yay, blue dragon! So now I would have a flying 2-3 instead of um, just a 2-3. And you would have to block. I guess it didn't matter though, because he would just block with his 0-3. Oh, 
Codex. Yeah. Yep. Three, two, one. Swing all. I mean, there's no point because the two three just gets blocked by the one three. The one one gets blocked by the O three. I mean, I guess I could swing with the one one because that maybe gets another point in if he blocks with the five five. See if he puts it there, but then the O three blocks the one one. So no, you're right. No need to uh, attack with that. Yeah, you can give that minus four minus O. Or you can swing with the two three. So I'm venturing into the dungeon. Or I would just play Pegasus, put it on that, and swing all. He's got to block the 5-5 five five with a 3-3. Three three. And he's still taking 9. So, yeah. Yeah, it's cute that you can put it on that, but... There you go. And still play it. That's a cool thing. So yeah, he's got to block something here. You can swing with the one one too, as well. Yeah, go for it. Because he can't block the three three. So yep, everything else is flying. It takes nine, goes to four. I still have an O forward back and my three two spy. This is why blue white flyers is good. Scoops him up. Says too much to think about. Alright. Okay, here we are in game three. I have three lands and a three drop. Two three drops, so what more can you ask for? And hey, if I don't have any plays, I can start drawing cards. And then a four drop. That possibly allows me to get in with my draw card. So turn three, spy. Turn four, Pegasus, draw card. That's my lineup right now. Yeah, it didn't matter. <laughs> commenting that. Yeah, I played a, a blue. Oh, right on time, not. So he's going to offer the trade. I'm going to decline, play the Pegasus, and then put the mates on the Pegasus. Eventually, maybe turn five. But um, having the three, two, three, eight out there is going to be fine. Decline. Pretty good. Also good. Ward 4 as long as it's untapped. Awesome. Pegasus. Swing for four. So this line is working out perfectly. And draw a land. No. But that is a good card to have with the Desert Doom out. So if he ever tries to kill it, then... I have no idea what happened there. Sacrifice creature, draw two cards, add two treasures. Got it. Sacrifice the 1 1.
Cast it, you draw a card. Okay. So he's cycling through a lot here, which is kind of scary, but all to do absolutely nothing. Um, he can sack to give it plus two, plus two, so no, I don't want to trade my two, a two, two for a two, three. Eh, I mean, I guess tap target creature. Kill the Basilisk. I don't really want to offer that trade. Eh, come to a river. No. Play the mace in that. Can't contact other plane is probably what I want. And I want to hit my land drop so I could play it now. Seven. Ugh. Draw two. I, mean, I drew blue dragon, which is awesome, but yeah, I'm just gonna swing two here. I think now I could see just holding back because the cards in hand that I have are really solid. I I don't agree with that. Offering that trade isn't great, but. I mean, okay. Um, I'll take two. No blocks. I, uh, yes, I would be trading for uh, the Death Touch guy, but he's a 1-2 that... All my dudes are flying, so that he doesn't matter. Finally drew the land. So, we're gonna slam Desert Doom and attack for two. <sighs> Drag Below seems bad on a card that can untap if you gain life. Nah, just play the Desert Doom. I think what I'm debating here is um, keeping up you come to a river, but it's got Ward 4, so it's not going anywhere. He's tapped out. This isn't necessary, but it's just old habits die hard. Okay, he does have one. Man, now that was cool. So that was super un unexpected and surprised me. <laughs> so good job, Blizzard. Wait, Blizzard? No, Watsy. <laughs> Sorry, force a habit. <laughs> Been a while since I've had to say good job, Watsy. I'm playing Hearthstone and Heroes of the Storm. Other Blizzard games. Diablo. Too much. And then, of course, Battlegrounds and Hearthstone. Yeah, I'm not going to trade a 1 2 for a, a 5 5. Good try. Uh, he could attack with a 4 5 here, and he might get in. Like, would I really block a 4 5 with my 5 5? So, if I were him, I would have attacked there. But, you know, my 5 5 is too good. Get it. Kind of shows, hey, I got a pump spell. But that's kind of some next level plays. Then again, yeah, I don't want to trade the giant growth for my 5 5, so. No. Whatever I do here, I should leave up 2 blue. Or 2 mana. So I really have 4 mana. So. Dragon Turtle? I have tons of flash. I should just pass turn here. Like Scion of whatever. Hunter's Mark. Spell so can't be countered. Jeez. Three less if it targets a blue permanent. Jeez. One mana Hunter's Mark. Okay. Well. 
bounce the uh, the basilisk because I don't really want to replay the doom desert doom, which is what I'm considering here. I'm saying, oh crap! I need to bounce my desert doom here, but it can't be countered. But if you don't have a target, it still is countered. So, he still takes seven here. And now I don't need to uh, worry about much of anything. <laughs> Another card that I can um, play at instant speed. I think the uh, end turn here is fine. Playing the Dragon Turtle is also good. Hopefully he plays something that's awesome. Uh, I think I should let him attack. I don't care about 4-5. I could flash in the Skyrim here. But I don't think it's necessary. Sorry, target creature. Can't do anything about that, so... Okay. I mean, I could play Dragon Turtle, decline, and then have a three, and then play the Mace. Okay, my turn. Play the Dragon Turtle, then play the Mace, and then I win. Or even that, yeah, that's 4 6. Yep, that works. So I think what I did is I played this because I didn't understand that the Dragon Turtle, if I would decline, would, um, would still untap. So equip the mace on the Skyon here, because if he has removal, it should go on the blue. Although. Yeah, if he has removal here, then it loses, so. Didn't matter. <sighs> 3 0. Oh. I don't think I'm playing bad people either, so. If they're making solid plays, they're playing decent decks. Like, that deck was good. Here in game four, I have three lands and a three drop, also a four drop, and a dragon turtle. Drawing Desert Doom, what more can I ask for? Man, it feels like game three. Still no draw card. That's okay. Venture into the dungeon. Bounce it! No, I'm kidding. Uh, the play, I think, is whatever he plays next turn. I keep tapped. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, you could bounce that. I think I do bounce that. I don't want him venturing into the dungeon. It's three mana. I have plays next turn. Look at that. And see, I don't agree here. Um, Dragon Sword would have been better here. Because then it keeps his 2 3 tapped. But I guess what I was thinking was. Okay, I'm going to uh, tap down his 4-drop rather than a 2-3. Because it's just a 2-3 and the 2-3 blocks the 2-3. But, okay, maybe. Block. 
I would be happy to uh, trade any tricks that he has for a 2 3 Gloomstalker as opposed to the Desert Doom or Dragon Turtle. Yeah. I'm happy for that trade. We don't need to contact other planes, so I think Dragon Turtle is the play here and pass. Could take the two here to tap down whatever his play is, but yeah, it looks like that's what I did. Yeah. That's what we should tap down. For sure. Slam, Desert Doom. Look at that! <laughs> I don't think that could ever get old. I mean, if you play four of them, sure. But still pretty awesome. See, now he can swing in, and I would snap block. He's already played one trick. What's the probability of him having another? I mean, he does have five cards in hand. Okay, that could get out of hand. <sighs> uh, no, 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 what are you doing? I guess I don't realize that this has flash. Do I want to get in for three here? I guess that's my play, is I want to get in for three. I don't agree with that. Three mana or three damage does not matter here. And tapping down his two two, so he can't draw. It's way better. Also, I was thinking I would draw two cards. Maybe I don't. I really don't know. Blue dragon's a good draw. That is unfortunate. See, now he can swing for four? Okay. I need to draw a land here. But I would way rather have uh, Sky on out and my 3-5 back. Because then it's just bad, his attacks. It's pretty good. So I have a 2-1 though. That's a good draw. I'll play that and pass. Goes to attacks, you tap. Two, three, maybe. Yeah. So we're not in a great spot. Still gotta draw land. Still have no way to contact other plane. And have no way to bounce the Desert Doom. Really would like Disenchant right now. Alright, so it's a 4-1 with Reach, which, spoiler alert, I don't know that. So, this is a misplay, I think. I think now I'll just get free here. And then I'll go into the Dungeon of the Mad Mage and then just win. Or, Scry 1. Dawning Portal, I don't think is worth it. Going into that, we have no other way of doing it, but again, I don't realize it's a 4 1 with reach. I'm thinking, oh, it will eventually get there. I can scry right now with the Jenny. Still, having a 4 1 doesn't seem that bad, but 
Even him not blocking here might be right, but then I just block with a 2-1. Yeah. Because now... You kill the Jenny and swing all. I gotta have a land. Okay, I got the land. <sighs> Not quite a nat 20. But yeah, if you kill this Jenny, then swing all, it's real bad. Alright, swinging with 6. So, uh, definitely think I should kill the 3-3 three, here. Three, three. That was a misplay. Uh, trading for the Null Hunter. The Null Hunter could definitely get out of control, so. Bad as it is, I think it'd go 3-2-1. So, Blue Dragon definitely the play here, targeting the Hunter, the Intrepid, and the Harbinger. A swing for three, put him at 12. It just prevents him from attacking with anything but the Harbinger, and I'm not going to block the Hill Giant if it was, let's say, a 4-6, because all he needs is one pump. He's blue and green. There's ways to pump. Uh, you come to a river, I think, is one. The card that I have that gives plus one. Grant, if he could swing for seven unblockable, I don't know. Yeah, I'm just not blocking with that, so... Let. Okay. Play an island, sure. I need to draw something here, so drawing two is very nice. Island's not what I want, and I don't have enough mana for a frost giant, so that's going to the bottom. Yeah. I I don't know how you hide. That interface, so I can count my lands, but Arrow Mental is a fine draw. It allows me to bounce the 7 6 if I need to. Secret Door's great, because then I can jump if I need to. I think here I swing 5, leave back the 3 3, and play Secret Door. I got to, I, as much as I want to be able to contact other plane, I really need to leave back. The, uh, I need to play Secret Door. Now, I could swing with just the Windseer and leave back the 5-5 five five instead. Because that doesn't really change the clock. So he go, it takes 5, goes to 7. And then, or he takes 3, goes to 9. Okay, it does change the clock. So I gotta swing with the 5-5. Five five. Apparently, I agree. <laughs> So it goes to seven. I play something to chump. Now I could return my five five uh, desert doom to the hand, but I don't think that's necessary. I think bouncing his Knoll Hunter or Harbinger is going to be better. So he can't play like two things. We shall see. If he swings all here, I block any three life. That's pretty good. Ooh. Okay. So block the let. Block the seven mana. Or the seven attack. Take seven. Go to one. And then swing back for eight. Oh, I can't because I will be dead. Um, yeah. Or take four, go to eight. Oh, I have to block there. Darn. So I have to block the seven six for sure. All right. Then I have to chump the four four or four five, whatever. Yeah. 
Or else I die. Darn. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, I'm probably going to die unless I draw plus two mace. Yep, this is the game. <laughs> like, I'm going to die next turn. This is where I, uh, I say, well, maybe I'll just draw plus two mace and uh, attack for two more. <laughs> and then what do you know? Right off the top. Swing for seven. Get there. And if I didn't draw that, I mean, who knows what else I had in my deck that could have helped, but... I never get that lucky where I top deck exactly what I need, so... In the video that I'm over myself with, I'm laughing. Insane. I never get that lucky. Because I don't! I have a flyer and a mace, so I have a 4 4 flyer. Seems good to me. You might as well play the planes to let, not let them know that I'm playing blue white, but it really doesn't matter. So here's an example of why you don't want to play the mace. Um, pinhole is a thing, I think it was called. Now, here I'm going to play the 2-3 because it blocks, and I want to stall out. Yes, I could play a 2-2 flyer, and we can start playing... Uh, trading for two every turn, but it's not what I want to do. And again, I'm happy to trade his tricks for my 2-3. This is just as easily... Um, you know, just check for tricks. Fine. I don't care. So yeah, let's play this. Yeah, Dungeon the Mad Mage might work out because we do have a planar ally and other ways to activate it. Our 2-3 is now dead, so finishing a dungeon doesn't really matter. And Mad Wizard Lair is a huge payoff for our deck because we have a lot of expensive creatures. So, I agree with that decision. It sucks that we had to take another 2 here. But we did trade one for one. Our mace is not doing much here. So he has six cards, I have three. That's weird. Helmet is fine. I could equip and then swing, but I don't think that's necessary. Planner ally would be fine. I'm not blocking with it, so I might as well attack with it. Fly over everything. I love the flying animation. I was just like, just adds to, you know, the ambiance of the game. There's a lot of times where I think something has flying. It doesn't have flying. Delver torch. See. Wait, that's not. <laughs> I thought that was a pigeonhole. Pigeon. I forget what it's called, but. And I don't really want to give him an opportunity to gain life again. Yeah, that's only two mana. But, oh well. I'll just bounce something. I mean, I could just equip the thing and swing for a bunch, but... Uh, okay. I guess my thinking there is preventing the ability uh, to yeah, that's going on bottom trigger the entering the dungeon that's fine and then my 2-5 is going to be fine if he wants to swing for one and offer that trade I'm going to decline had enough okay flyer's too good this hand seems fine I have three plays with just two lands. 
I draw a third, I have a third play. Get rid of one of the frost giant, but whatever. And then yeah, play both. Oh yes, got attacked with one purpose. Really critical that I did that. <laughs> you gotta play correct, I guess. Ugh, hate seeing that. That's gonna be a problem if I don't find an answer. Yeah, I'm definitely not venturing in the dungeon when I'm playing this. He offers to trade, I'm happy to try to accept. But I doubt it will come. He will probably gain life some way and build up his counters. Because my two little one ones aren't going to be threatening him anytime soon. Not bad. Like I said, likes what he's drawing too. I can still trade here. Okay, not anymore. I'm gonna have to take that. Arrow Mental's good, but I have no way of playing it. Uh, not gonna... Yeah, that I don't agree with. I would have used the bird to tap the other creature. Keeping back the, uh... I guess I wanted to swing for one, but... I feel like blocking for three seems better. Although I probably assume that he would gain life somehow. Anyway, so... Trample haste. Yeah. Okay. So it looks like we're going into the dungeon again. But I would, again, tap the bird in order to do this, not the O4. Then I would be at 12 right now, and that's much more reasonable. Create a token would be fine, but I think the mana is better, because then I get a 4 or 5 on the board. Not that that helps much, but if I draw a land, um, I can play the 4 6, and then bounces 3 3. It's 4 4. So I'm at 9, and he's swinging for 9, so I got a block. Either way, it doesn't matter. I'm going to prevent 4 damage. Not a great spot, that's for sure. Yeah, there's, even if I draw the land and be able to play the arrow mental, it's not enough to stop the 5-5. Five, five. So, 5-1 five and one now. This hand is perfectly fine. It's got a 2-drop and possibly a 3-drop. It's not great, but I don't want to mulligan and have this same hand. But minus a contact other planes or without a two drop to play. Like imagine the sand but without Gloomstalker in it. It's possible I draw that, so this is just one of those hands where you just close your eyes and hope. In limited. Constructed this is a Morgan. Hey, out of flames. So I have to draw more, but we have two turns to do it. Okay, we drew another play, so that's fine. Uh, now the question is, do you equip or do you play the other Gloomstalker? Which do you uh, play and why? That's kind of weird. I would have waited for me to equip or something, but at the same time, perhaps he has 
um, ways of dealing with it. I flash in the Scoia here. I mean, I guess either are fine. It's a 2-3. It'll block the 2-3. He's playing Boros. I'm pretty sure this is the game where he gets rid of my enchantment. Alright, read this card. Becomes block and deals one damage to target creature. Oh, I'm not blocking that. So, uh, the spoiler that comes up later. There's the portable hole. That's what it's called. Darn. See, that's why that's just not good. I'd rather have the one one here. That scries. Like, I, ooh, I'm not gonna have time to pay for. You know what I mean? No attacks, for sure. Combat, we're gonna tap the... That guy. He's targeting that. See, now what I should do here is... Tap the 2-1. Okay, two. Entice him to come in with attacks. Okay. <laughs> Maybe not, I guess. There's no reason for me to contact other plane during the main phase here, so I just pass the turn. He swings for a four. No. I think that was a misclick there. Pass the turn. We need two lands to play our arrow, air elemental, which is why that card's not great. But it's fine in blue white flyers. Yep. Adventure. It's not a lot to say or do here other than just wait for a better draw. Imagine if I draw Blue Dragon. Or my 5-5. Five, five. Or 5. Still need, I still need two lands here. I've missed one so far. Which is why I probably should be playing 18. But I can imagine if that Guild Thief was just a land. I could have been fine too. White Dragon, oh. Yeah, this game does not look good. You can contact now. There's no reason not to now. Nothing's going to change. Except your ability to click it, maybe. Just missed. But we're happy to draw two lands, either way. Um... Pegasus is not exactly what we're looking for, but it does allow us not really anything. I don't know. It's like, I don't want to contact other planes. I can't, because then we die. But... Can't attack. Can't block. This is just awful. So he puts it on the planar ally. Or even the Fowler. Here I'll easily block with the 2-1. Two, 2-1. One. Two, one. Because I know what it does. I mean, it's a new set. I've never played it before. It's been eight years since I've played Magic. You know, these are all forgivable things, but once you make that mistake once or twice, you start to realize not to do it again. 
And the game's over at this point. There's no outs. There's no way for me to win. Even air, element, air elemental is not good enough. What am I supposed to do? Bounce the white dragon and then... You know, he just replays it and then it taps it. I could bounce the Valar, he replays it, then the white dragon's a 5-5. Five five, and he swings with everything. And it's just... He's got planar ally. There's no winning here. Too slow. Not enough lands. Arrow Mythal doesn't do enough. I I think I'm just doing this to see what else was coming. There's my blue dragon. Like, a blue dragon would have helped. But I wouldn't have had the mana to play it anyway, because I missed that land drop. So, there's my second loss. They happened quick. This is where I'm like, oh crap. You know what I mean? Alright, so now I'm going to go into the deck and I believe get rid of Guild Thief. Been thinking about it for a while and just. It's just been underperforming. I finally get rid of it. Which I'm happy to do. I mean, I'd rather have the Pixie over that or Power Persuasion even. But I'm not really looking to play a three drop when I'm kind of having mana issues two games in a row. So, honestly, I should probably just add a, another land. But playing 18, I just hate a lot. But it's probably still right here to play 18. And if you didn't have to sacrifice the Mimic in order for the ability to work, it would be playable. But, yeah, the only other playable card here is Land or Silver Raven. In my opinion. I'm not going to play a third ra Ranger's Hawk over the Silver, ra Silver Raven. Essentially the same thing, but the Silver Raven at least allows me to... If I'm like on the draw with two lands, I make sure that, okay, I don't want to draw Era Elemental. I mean, this is pretty easy when I have hindsight, but there you go. Back in. Sand is solid. It needs another land, uh, island, but I'll keep that for sure. Happy to play a turn one Hawk. That's not an island. If it offers a trade, I would take it. Again, I'm probably the non-aggressor. He's probably the aggressor. A lot of games you just need to ask yourself, am I the aggressor or am I the control player? And once you figure that out, a lot of these decisions of, should I attack, should I block? become easy. I'm not sure why I attacked there. I, I guess I assume that he would equip. Because I... Looking at this again, I feel like us just sitting back and... Okay, yeah. See, so I guess, yeah. That makes sense. Us sitting back and uh, waiting around is probably correct. Because my dudes are probably going to be better than his, but who knows. Still. Happy enough that it worked out that way. Alright. No tricks up my sleeve. I'm drawing cards. Down bottom seems good. So we're just going to Jenny for an island. Uh, I think playing the Jennies here is better than the Dungeoneer. It has flying, so it's more likely to get in for damage, as this might get blocked. However, I am considering playing this because he has black, so he's got removal. And I want the Jenny to survive. Still, play the Jenny. Let's just scry immediately for at least one. See if you have a, an island on top. Good call. 20. I mean, that's fine. 
Uh, neither of these are good. The Stygia... Eh. Just in case it mattered. <laughs> I want that one on top. You never know. It might matter. It does in this game. Spoilers, but... Some, sometimes games go that long. Not what you like to see on turn six is your opponent playing a white dragon. Still... Yep. It's player planner. I lie. No attack. Jeez. So it's like we need to draw land, but if we draw land, we're just still not drawing spells. Ah. Jeez. I mean, we're not dead. We're taking five a turn. No block. We have three turns to go. Okay, we drew the island. So we can play Dungeoneer. Or not Dungeoneer. Gloomstalker and Dungeoneer. Why do I keep saying that? Gloomstalker and Dragon Turtle. Keeping down the White Dragon for two turns. Super solid. Make sure to tap correctly. Even off the two blue. Equipping to the two one. Yeah, that seems better. Passing. Got scared, huh? I mean, it didn't matter. It was going to attack anyway, but... Oh, that was attackers. Never mind. At this point, I gotta race him. Um, I mean, I swing all here, and I make him take six. So, seems fine to me. I'm winning this race, that's for sure. White Dragon doesn't untap. The Dragon Turtle does. Swing all. I mean, I would have attacked him before venturing here. Either way, we need to scry. Like, I don't understand why I do this here. He's not tapped out. He's got to play. Pegasus on top is fine. But, like, game one, I attacked first before playing my 1-1. One -one. But now, when it actually matters, I don't do it. I just don't get it. Yes, attack all. It goes to eight. I have a three-four back. Hold the mana, bluff something. And he can't attack. He can not even attack with the two-one here. It's although he's taking four goes to four. Yeah, this is tough for him. You can't attack with the 1-1. One, one. I'm at 9. That's pretty good. Alright, I'm at 6. So if I attack all here, he just loses. Didn't notice the good game before, just so you know. I would have gave him a good game back. But, like... He didn't need to attack there. He wasn't dead. At least not on 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 board. He was not dead on board. So conceding there, he saw numbers that I didn't see. So three lands and a three drop. Potential for a four drop. Or to smooth out my uh, draws. This is fine. And I'm on the draw. Oh yeah, super good draw like a one drop or two drop but this is fine hmm should I play planes or should I play island first 
I decided with Island because it was banned at one point for a day. That's an April Fool's joke, but I think it still happened. 19! And Ranger's Hawk is here to uh, ruin your day. A turn short, though. Offer the trade, I will block. You are playing black white, which makes me think that you are the aggressor. Sure. Bonus turn. If I were him, I probably would swing there. Because I still want the hawk to get traded off. Uh, I swing with the hawk here. Because my 2-3 is back to block. I guess I'm thinking I'll block the 2-1 and the 1-4. I mean, I guess if he does remove the 2-3, which there's a lot of removal, then my Hawks saves 2 damage. It's reasonable. Again, I wouldn't fault you either way. If you attack there, I, w I wouldn't think that was wrong. But playing again, I would have attacked there. Yeah, let's venture into the dungeon. Let's go with our dungeoneer. Uh, I guess I'm debating whether or not to attack with my 1-1. One, one. And I do. Because you're not going to block except anything but the 2-1. And at this point, he might equip it somewhere else, so... Waiting on the opponent. Not sure what I was looking at there, but probably just reading cards because I'm unfamiliar with them. One black mana. Not sure what one black mana means. So there's definitely a pause here. Could be doing something else though, so who knows. Lost mine for sure. I gotta get through it as quickly as possible. And I have the 2 3 out that could get double strike. I'll probably go greedy enough though and go into the Ninja the Man Mage because I'm greedy. But Lost Mine, I think, is the correct play here. Looking from an outsider's perspective. This is fun. I'm really glad uh, I'm doing this. This is kind of a new ish way of uh, doing drafts. If you like it, hit the subscribe button. Let me know that you like it. Um, being under. Hey, I picked the right one. Being under a thousand subscribers super important if you hit that subscribe button for me. And the like button would be super helpful. I mean, you've made it this far, right? So, must be. It's a bit entertaining. And even if it's not that entertaining, maybe give me the subscribe anyway. Just until I hit a thousand. Then you can unsubscribe if you really want. <laughs> That's fair, right? Anyway, uh, not sure what we're waiting on here. The opponent's really delving into the tank here. Lots of hard decisions. He's got a four drop and another awesome four drop and passes the turn. Well, we're gonna slam our planner ally here after swinging for one. Because there's no reason to swing for three. The one four blocks it. Uh, hell, he could, he could block all and he'd be trading Bronze Dwarf for the Veteran Dungeoneer, which is a, seems like a good trade to me. So, take one. Please use your removal on it. Yeah, I wouldn't either. This is 100% going to die. He's got removal in hand, for sure. He's just hesitating too much. Sacked the 1-1. One, one. I would have sacked the treasure.
but there maybe he's like got a bunch of got stuff in his hand. He's not doing a whole lot. Yeah. I mean, you could equip, but it doesn't get through my 3-4. He's got to kill my planner ally. As quickly as he can. Or else that's going to overwhelm him. And then my Gloomstalker will be activated as well. I mean, technically, I could swing all now. And then... Eh, it wouldn't actually do anything. <laughs> Never mind. Treasure chest. Roll d20. You lose three life. Five tokens. Yada yada yada. Okay. Oh, that's a fine draw. I don't mind that. But swinging for. Mm, let's talk, right? Let's swing for four. Yeah, attack all here was uh, definitely a misplay. But. Probably thought the same thing I just thought earlier. But hey, it's a good bluff. Because the 3 4 can go on the 1 4, and the 2 3 can go on the 1 3. And then we just bounce off each other. Call it a day. Good for him, though, for making these blocks. I mean, when you're over the board and someone just goes swing all, and you can really get blown out, it's it's hard to make these blocks. But he did correctly. Oh, uh, you come to a river could kill the the one four, but I'd rather play an arrow elemental. And I'm probably thinking, oh darn, I screwed up. I could have got him for three more damage if I played Error Elemental first. Which is very true. I don't really want to play Error Elemental here. Um, because, what am I bouncing? Oh, Loney. So, I can play the Apprentice here. Or I can contact another plane try to draw another card in the end I think I should just still play air elemental yeah because then I can swing for five six seven eight nine ten you'd go to four if I use come to a river which uh, I don't know if that's right Uh, yeah, I guess you could argue not playing air, air elemental here. Bouncing those guys is not good. I'm winning on board as is, so. Six. Five treasure tokens. Jeez. Pretty insane. Going into the tank on a lot of stuff here. It's cool that he can't attack back though, so there was really no risk, all reward for me attacking there. Let's try to draw. Ooh, blue dragon, now that's a card. 5-5 five, five blue dragon, heck yeah. Give it to me. And Desert Doom? Oh, man. My turn. A secret door? No way. So, here I would swing with the... With the Planner Ally and Hawk again. Now, you could argue to play Air Elemental again. About seeing the 1-3, but... At this point, just put him at 10. Play a 5-5. Five, five. All today. Uh, I would dark pool here. He 
we all matter at that one point. the nine and we slam our desert doom that cost seven I'm pretty sure I was looking for that and at this point I don't think I play her open until I have the mana for blue dragon because I would need it for the treasure chest and blue dragon is way more important than air elemental at this point okay life is now off work and baby is taken care of so at this point Pretty sure something big happens here. When this creature dies, return to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control. Yep. X equals five, so he lost five lives. And it became a two five. So okay. Turn up X target creature with toy mana cost value X or less. Hmm. Five three Flying Trample. So at this point, playing Blue Dragon seems fine. It's not like he can attack into it. And I'm at 20. But I don't have the mana, that's correct. Um, I could play the Air Cult Elemental. But I don't see why I would do that. I want to play Blue Dragon, yes. But I can't. So, playing the Apprentice is fine. Gives him a two turn clock. Draw a card. Draw a second Blue Dragon. Scry for an island. Definitely should have played that first if I was going to do that. Texas is not what I want to draw. I want to draw an island or land. What are we thinking here? Doing something flying doesn't matter. Everything already has flying. So yeah, bottom. Come to the river is up. Now I wonder if I used it on uh, the two five, what would have happened? Here? I don't know. But I guess having the Pegasus would have been fine. It would have forced him to have to block if I played it. So, because then you'd be at four, and I'd be swinging for four. So something's getting minus one, minus one. When it dies, okay. He can sack it at any point, though. Looks like he is sacking it now. Uh, you come to a river. I could bounce it, but I don't see a reason to do that. Um, truth be told, I should bounce the 5-3. It's not like he can play it except for one. Right? You'd go to two. Swing him for five. Yeah. Bounce it as he attacks with it. You can't replay it. And then I swing for two, he goes to two. He replays it maybe for one. And then bounce it again with the arrow elemental. That's four damage. 
So that's my lineup right now. We'll see what I end up doing. Again, I don't remember what I do. I did remember Prince of Undead was played. So resolve. I mean, you can bounce it now, whichever. Because I'm really debating it. Yeah, 6 3 trample. I mean, I don't have to bounce it because if he has hacks. I just swing for two. I can take eight here and still be fine. Uh, why did it? Okay, he did not attack with it. That's why. Okay, my turn. I'm thinking I won't have the mana for air elemental, so maybe don't bounce it. But I think right here the play is to bounce right now. I mean, I could untap, too. Yeah, untapping and not using the treasure in case I don't draw the uh, the land for air cult elemental. That's reasonable. I can see that. Okay, but I drew it. So, at this point, playing the air elemental is better than you come to a river. Because then I have two cards that are lethal that he has to deal with. So then it becomes a 1-1. One, one. Uh, submit 0. And I, I've been apparently miscounting the lands over there, so... My mistake. Still, now we guarantee that a uh, blue dragon can be played. So, if I get to untap, I'm likely to win here. Because I'll have you come to a river, I'll have blue dragon. I'm at 18. He's got a card full of hand, uh, hand full of cards. <laughs> card full of hands. But, he's just too low of life right now. He's wasted too much time doing nothing in an attempt to blow me out. And when he blew me out, he lost five life doing it. Which ended up not really mattering. So. Should have did it earlier. And there we are. All right, so that's seven two. Not bad. Yeah, again, I really enjoyed doing this. This was a lot of fun. Uh, I think the next time I draft, uh, I'll review. Um, I'll review my my plays and upload it to YouTube as well. So hit subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments below about what you would have done as well. Bye for now.